Ground Services. All of the help that they need, emotional and financial support. Give a round of applause to Hampton University today. You can do better than that. We dedicate our broadcast today as we come to you on the nation's largest, largest African-American-owned church station. The Impact Network, give them a round of applause. We are coming to you live on WVON locally here in Chicago. You can go to WVON. Uh, dot com so that you can stream them live, but go to rainbowpush.org so that you can stream us live as well. Uh, we are dedicating today's broadcast to the life and legacy of Mrs. Juanita Abernathy, the wife of the Reverend Dr. Ralph Abernathy, who made her transition this week at the age of 87, the mother of four, the mother of the movement. Many people do not know that her home was bombed while she and Dr. Abernathy, Reverend Dr. Abernathy, had a little child too. No one was closer to Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, and that includes Mrs. Juanita Abernathy. So much history, so much history, so much dedication with this woman, and we want to thank God for her today. Give her a round of applause as she joins the angels. Amen. And we all know that we love beauty, yes? And who has been more responsible for helping us to understand just how beautiful we are in our Africanness than, than the Johnson Products Company? Wantu Wazuri Use Afro Sheen. Beautiful people use Afro Sheen. Look, I remember it, because I had my Afro. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> but one of the founders of that company, the wife of George Johnson, Joan Johnson, was laid to rest, and we dedicate our broadcast to her, too. We thank her for her philanthropy. We thank her for her dedication to the black community and to all of humankind. We thank her for being an icon who helped us to understand just who we are, just how beautiful we are. Wantu Wazuri, use Afro Sheen. Beautiful people, what? Use Afro Sheen. Amen, everybody. Give her some love. Our continued prayers for the people of the Bahamas as we get an update from the Honorable Michael C. Fountain a little bit later in our broadcast. He's one of the consuls general for the Bahamas, and we want to find out what is going on. We are not going to have Bahamas fatigue. We are going to find out what's going on, and we are going to know what we could do to help our people in the Bahamas. Amen. <laughs> Michael Jordan, Superman, gave them one million dollars. Give him some love. The rapper Ludacris has made a substantial donation. Give them some love, everybody. That's right, and we can all help in our own way if we have clothes, if we have soap, if we have dolls, if we have books. Our people need our help. So we're going to be giving you some more information about how, just how you can help. Cameron came in from school, so we just love you, young man, but you better get back to school after today. You came in for the HBCU Classic. I know I'm not mad at you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Next week, we will be broadcasting live from the Trinity United Church of Christ. Why? Put your hands together. That's all right. That's right. Because Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes will be giving the keynote sermon. Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Oh, we're going to have a great time. So meet us at the Trinity United Church of Christ next week. We want to wel welcome some more of our young people. That's right. Ivy Tech College from down there in Anderson, Indiana. Give them some love. Oh, you can do better than that. Give them the Chicago love. And of course, we're thanking God. Many of us are going to be running out of here today to the HBCU Classic. How many of you are going to be going? And I know the Howard people. Yes, and we love Hampton also. All right? It's a great, great gathering. And you see just the power of the HBCU system when you get down to Soldier Field today. Oh, amen, amen, amen. Come on, give our HBCUs, all of them, some love. And keep your hands together as we bring to you our video of the week so that we can give you some news that you don't know, some news that you need to know. Let's roll tape. Never forget the day etched in our memories on this week, 9-1-1-2001. None of us are secure until all of us are secure. It's so hard to say goodbye 
we lost two of our matriarchs of grace, strength, and courage who broke racial barriers and who were proof positive that beside every successful man stands a strong woman. Mrs. Juanita Abernathy, writer of the business plan for the 1955 Montgomery bus boycott and civil rights activist, and Mrs. Joan Johnson of the hair care and cosmetic company Johnson Products and the first black owned business on the American Stock Exchange. A big thank you to all of our sponsors, volunteers and partners for being instrumental in our successful back to school rally hosted at Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. Congratulations are in order. They're causing a stir. CNN is curating an all African American news panel with April Ryan, Angela Rye, Andrew Gillum, and Bakari Sellers. Stay tuned as they have something to say. This is classic. Congrats to Chicago native Jacqueline Stewart on becoming the first African American host for Turner Classic Movies. Congrats to WVON's Melody Span Cooper on the release of her book, The Girlfriend's Guide to Closing the Deal. Voting matters. We continue to make history. This week's Democratic debate was held at Texas Southern University, a public, historically black university. Voting matters to Chief Judge Tim Evans on winning his sixth term. National Voter Registration Day is Tuesday, September 24th, 2019, and Rainbow Push Coalition is a national location to register to vote. Spread the word. Congrats to Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church's 69th anniversary and to Reverend James T. Meeks' 40th pastoral anniversary. And happy belated birthday to our very own Shelly Pierre Davis. He's a long distance runner. Reverend Jackson attends the Congressional Black Caucus in Washington, D.C. and will join us again next week as we welcome our keynote speaker, Friendship West's Baptist prophetic pastor, Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes, as we broadcast live from Trinity United Church of Christ. hope that you will be joining us this week. I am the host of the largest, on the largest progressive talk radio station in the country, WCPT 820, Monday through Friday, the Santita Jackson Show. We do progressive talk, and we hope that you'll be joining us. And we want you to join us here on Monday night. Doors open at 6. Let's talk about it with Santita Jackson and friends, led by Mrs. Jackson. We, this week, are going to be talking about HBCUs. You know, Jamel Hill the great sports writer has put forth an idea that many of us wonder about. What if these black students who are the engine, who are the engines, the financial engines for all of these big NCAA schools, what if they put that energy into HBCUs? Huh? You want to talk about that? You're going to join us here on Monday night? You want to talk about that? Um, you know what? Let's do this. You can join me, Maurice. Hmm. It will never lose its power. Sing it with me. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Check you. I know you know this. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. Oh, it reaches to the
together this young woman this young lady who will be a woman one day has been homeschooled and she's part of our oratorical program we thank judge Stanley Hill who is not in retirement but he dedicates he dedicates so much of his love energy to these children and so we bring them before you every week because we want our children to know that they are somebody that yes they can and that whatever their minds can conceive and their hearts can believe that they can achieve put your hands together everybody for faith jenkins good morning rainbow push i am faith jenkins and today i will be reciting Transatlantic Trip by Angela Bowen. I won't ever forget my ancestors' cries and pains. I can still remember the images of them bond in chains. I see them packed like sardines in the bottom of each ship. I see them being thrown overboard during that middle passage trip. For at least eight weeks, they remained bonded in those arcs. And those who could not endure the pain became food for the sharks. First stops were the islands where they were beaten until broken in. Second stop was the mainland where it started all over again. Up on the sail block, to be sold as property, forced to work all day in this so-called land of liberty. Tobacco was the first crop my ancestors had to pick. So, you need to stop smoking. Knowing this, you'll just have to quit. Sugar cane and cotton were other crops they picked too. And indigo was a dye they picked that gives us the color blue. Lynched, beaten, hanged, stabbed, burned, tar-feathered and kicked, castrated, maimed, shot, raped, slapped, around and whipped as long as I live on this earth without shame. I won't ever forget the pains of my ancestors. Transatlantic trip. I would like to thank Rainbow Push for giving me this opportunity to speak today. Come on, put your 
Put your hands together for Faith Jenkins' as baby. And thank you, because that is so timely. Thank you, Judge Hill. That is so timely as we reach out to our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. We are everywhere. In fact, more of us are in South and Central America and the Caribbean than we're brought to the United States. And so it is with that in mind that we are going to keep what is happening in the Bahamas in front of mind. And so I want you, before we welcome the Honorable Michael C. Fountain, one of the Consuls General of the Bahamas, I want you to look at this video, look at the work that we have been doing and that we plan to do in the Bahamas and what we're doing at the border in El Paso. Let's roll tape. Last week we were at the border, myself, Reverend Rodney Patterson, Omar Sharif, and we took literally a truck with 10 pallets of goods down to the border. We unpacked these boxes, countless boxes, over 100,000 wipes, over 60,000 diapers, countless bottles of shampoo, countless bottles of soap, countless bottles of toothpaste and toothbrushes, countless shoes, socks. We took it to the border. But the interesting thing that we must understand is it's not just a social service issue, this is a justice issue. While at the border, I met Hondurans, Nicaraguans, Haitians, Ugandans, Cubans, countless children, adults, families separated, simply trying to find asylum. Something has to be done. I wanna first of all say that this is just the beginning. As we continue to push people united, you, me, and everyone that's watching this video to serve humanity, it is not right to witness children separated. It is not right to have children and grown folks locked behind cages. It is not right that we can find $3.6 billion to separate and not $3.6 billion to treat people right. And so again, I wanna thank Hope Border Network, a great organization right there in El Paso that is doing the work. I wanna thank Congress Lady Escobar. They hosted us. They sent us to different spaces to learn. I also want to thank all of those pastors, all of our rabbi friends, all of our imams, all of the organizations that came together to simply serve humanity. The Q Construction Company came and they wrapped so many logistical partners to make sure that right here at our national headquarters, we can go down to the border. But again, this is not just the end. This is the beginning. We are getting ready to come together, united, to serve those that are at the border, not just with shampoo, not just with toothpaste, not just with sandals, not just with diapers, but we're going to figure out a policy that makes it equal for all people, making sure that nobody is neglected, making sure that everyone is respected. And so thank you again, Reverend Jackson, inspiring a young man like myself. And I want you to join us, join us as we continue to unite to serve humanity, because that's who we are as we push ahead to do the work. Hurricane Dorian tearing across parts of the Bahamas. The powerful Category 5 storm pummeling the Abaco Islands with relentless rain and that damaging wind. You can see what it's doing here and off in the distance, those waves crashing against the pier. Officials fear that this storm will leave catastrophic damage here in this part of the islands. The eye of the storm passing right through the Abaco Islands. Intense gusts continuing. The wind so strong we had to take cover inside. Everyone, please pray for us, please. Please, my baby's only four months old. Please pray for us. The baby car seat. The aftermath, devastating. You can see it right here. Trees have been snapped, homes and businesses torn apart, and boats and cars tossed around, either by Dorian's extreme winds or that massive storm surge that left this island community in ruins. Bahamian emergency management officials calling food distribution a challenge and deeming the water in some areas unsafe for consumption and hygiene. The desperate search intensifying. Hundreds, if not thousands, missing, buried in rubble. The death toll still sitting at 43, but it's expected to increase drastically. This mother of two boys and a small child, desperate to get off the devastated island. I went to Sunny Point trying to get on yesterday, couldn't get on. I went to the airport, it was too chaos. I couldn't get on, so I said, Lord, today have to be the day for me to get on this boat. The humanitarian crisis there is growing. At least 70,000 people are homeless. The docks filled with survivors hoping to be evacuated. Cruise ships have been repurposed to ferry people to Nassau. It's chaos here, and the place is uninhabitable. Yeah. Nobody can live here. In Chicago, Reverend Jesse Jackson pledged to help with the relief efforts in the Bahamas. 
The Bahamas are the classic victims of global warming. The ice has been penetrated by the sun, the waters are hotter and rising. The wind blows more fiercely, and the Bahamas happen to be the first real stop of Oregon, sinking the whole island. People will die in great numbers. On to Florida and into the Carolinas. We intend this coming weekend to organize Bahamians and those who sympathize with Bahamians to meet us at Rainbow Port Saturday morning. We begin to get rock products to the Bahamas. Right now we can't get them back because there's no place to land the airports on the water today, but we intend to get products and food services to the Bahamas starting this weekend. Thank you very much. While we grieve and mourn, the work has to begin, and it has to be robust, and it has to be right now, and it has to be powerful, so we need powerful people standing with us to be able to bring many resources to bear. together everybody as we welcome get on your feet and welcome the honorable michael c fountain council general of the bahamas come on everybody give him a chicago welcome give him some love thank you santita and good morning rainbow push i was thinking about the words that i needed to offer today I did not know about the video, but every time I see those images of my people and my lineage, it hurts that much more. The update. As of today, there are 15,000 Bahamians, according to published reports, who are without food or shelter. 1,300 still missing. Over 5,000 Bahamians were evacuated from the devastated islands of Grand Bahama and Abaco and moved into the capital city of New Providence, Nassau, and they are in need. The forecast calls for a tropical storm to hit those same impacted areas. The Prime Minister has called upon the Bahamas Christian Council for a day of prayer, which will be happening next Wednesday, and that will be followed by a national day of mourning. Despite all of that, you will never see a more resilient people than Bahamians. Despite all of that, we understand our faith. We have a will and a power and a spirit aligned with that of the Creator because this, as none of it is a mistake, when hell drops on your head for 68 hours straight and you survive, then you know that you are here with reason and purpose. The Bahamian people know that, and those are the images that we are going to continue to broadcast around the world. Strength and resilience and purpose. So we will stand and we will fight and we will rebuild the Bahamas better than ever. But we will not do that alone. And I stand before you to express the gratitude of a grateful nation of Bahamians. The Bahamians here in the Midwest jurisdiction over which I have responsibility. The Bahamians in the Commonwealth and all over the world, thank you. Last week I stood with you and I announced our initiative in the Midwest, Bahamas Forward. Today I return to announce our first project, the Bahamas Forward Weekend of Giving. October 4th, 5th, and 6th. We will have satellite locations set up around the city, and of course, Rainbow Push will be a collection hub. So I wanna thank Reverend Jackson, I wanna thank Rainbow Push for standing with us, for being our first strategic partner, because after that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, on Monday the 7th, trucks will be rolling, planes will be flying, and Bahamians in need will get the help. We'll get the help. We'll get the help that they deserve. So I want you to know that I am here, as Reverend Jackson told me when we first spoke on the matter, and I stand at the ready. It isn't just the help that is being given to us. It's the help I'm going to give to you, because this is my new mission as the diplomatic representative of the country, to make sure people do not forget this is not a race. 
This will be going on for a long time. The geographic face of the Bahamas has changed forever. People's lives have been altered forever. You and I are now together forever in this mission to restore and rebuild and stabilize. So don't forget the Bahamas is open for business still. There were two affected islands, but the country is open. We need you now more than ever. Please come experience the beauty of our country and the love of our people. Remember, you can donate at www.bahamas.com forward slash relief or www.wanaluthra.org forward slash donate. I thank you. We cannot find the words enough as Bahamians to express our love to you the world over for your standing and making yourself known and being with us at this time. And may God bless the people of the United States of America as he continues to bless and keep the people and the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Thank you. Amen. As they say, the struggle continues, the struggle continues, and we will remember our brothers and sisters in the Bahamas today in the Bahamas. You know, nurses all over the world and all over this country are fighting not only for their rights, but they're fighting for us. They are, there's a nursing shortage. They are fighting for so much to make our hospitals safe, to make them clean. They're fighting, they're fighting for us. In America, we're the only industrialized nation where we don't have a universal single-payer system. Every American does not have access to equal, to equal high quality health care. They're fighting for us. So from New Zealand to Ireland to Zimbabwe, as we remember the life and legacy of the great freedom fighter, Robert Mugabe, who they're funeralizing right now, who they're funeralizing right now, and in Pennsylvania and all over this country, in California, they are fighting. The nurses are coming together and they're fighting to be unionized, and we are going to hear from the University of Chicago's very own sister in this struggle. Is it Rukia? You can go on and say it, get it right, girl, because you know, my name is Santita, and so many people call me Santina. Come closer. Hi. What is your morning. name? I'm Denise. Denise? Denise? Yes. Summers? Yes. There you go. Put your hands together for Denise Summers. Come on. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Denise Summers, and yes, I am a proud nurse for 15 years, and I'm also a proud nurse that works at the University of Chicago. Um, I'm one of 2,200 nurses that is represented by the National um, Nurses United, which is an organization and union uh, of over 150,000 nurses. As previously stated, there is a nursing shortage. However, there is not a nursing shortage that is not enough that we cannot fulfill what is required to adequately care for our patients. Back in April of this year, we uh, are now taking a stand for what we believe that we need to do to provide adequate and safe care to our patients. Um, we, let me make this clear, it was never our intent to join a union and then strike, but it was to join a union to better advocate for our patients as well as ourselves. The problem of patient, um, of many, having many patients that the nurses have to endure is a chronic problem, not only at the University of Chicago, but every hospital in Chicago, across Illinois, across the United States, and abroad, okay? When you are overstressing nurses, we are unable to adequately care for your loved ones as well as our own. Many of us are forced to work beyond our 12 hours. We are forced to go without lunches, and that means delay in treatment and many in the procedural areas and in receiving chemotherapy. It is an unsafe environment. And although numbers can say that, yes, there is one to four or one to three, 
but we need to look at the bigger picture and look at the acuity or the illnesses of those that we serve. We do a disservice to our communities when we are not adequately staffed. Patients are not getting pain management in a timely manner. People are not getting refills in a timely manner. People are not getting transplants or surgeries and chemotherapies in timely manners. We have proposed to our administrators what we believe will help us to adequately staff our, our, our facilities, and it has gone on deaf ears. This is not just about an economic proposal, although we are losing many benefits as well, but it is time for us to become united and to take a stand. So I clearly want you all to understand that it is not just for money that we do this. We do this because we do care. We're doing this because we want to be better advocates for our patients, for you, for your loved ones, as well as for ourselves. We put ourselves at risk. We know that anything that you put too much stress on will eventually break. Many nurses are coming out of the field because of that, and that is why many of us have these nursing shortages. And so we hope that we get our message out to you and that you rally behind us and understand that this is not what we wanted to do. But when we're left with no other cho choice, this is what we're going to do because we want to be advocates for you. And so for that, I say thank you and God bless you all. Come on, you can do better than that, everybody. As we are preparing to be ministered in song, I hope that you heard Denise Summers from the University of Chicago. I don't know how many of you have had to go to the hospital. How many of you have had to go to the hospital? If you go, as I have gone, I've been hospitalized, you see how hard nurses work. You see how hard their assistants work. You see how hard everybody works, including the doctors, but the doctors come in and ask the nurses, what am I supposed to do? What's going on here? Do they not? Because the nurses are with you every second of every minute of your stay. And so all they're asking for is to be treated in a humane way, to be treated in a respectful way, so that we can be treated in humane ways, in respectful ways. Can you imagine being denied a timely treatment of chemotherapy? Think about that. What if you have an emergency? What if you can't breathe and you're going to the, I mean, look, we are spending billions and trillions of dollars on wards. We need to be training nurses. We need to be training doctors. That is what they are fighting for. So now you can do better than that. You give Denise Summers and our nurses at the University of Chicago and all around the country and all around the world, give them some love. Come on now. Sometimes in our life, we all have pain, we all have sorrow, but if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Help me say, lean on me. I need you to stand on your feet, Come on. grab somebody by the hand, and you sing this song while you look them in the eye. Can you look at them in the eye and say, I need you to help me to lean on me. I want to lean on you. We got to help each other. Can I get some help in the room? Come on. Yeah. 
Reverend Billy Jones, our first choir director, and we just love him so. We love him so. We thank you, Brian, for still being a part of this family. Oh, give it up for Billy Jones, Reverend Billy Jones. <laughs> Going back down memory lane. That's right, another Chicagoan, Minnie Riperton. Ooh, I love it. Did I sound like a Delta? I meant to. We are loving this HBCU classic. We love our HBCUs, and again, we want to thank Hampton University for standing up for our young people at the University of the Bahamas. They are bringing them in. They're giving them wraparound services, tuition-free. Their fees are covered. And guess what? They're getting psychological help. They're going to be involved in the churches. This is why you've got to contribute to our HBCUs, because remember, they were first land-grant schools because they were going to contribute to newly freed Americans. So whenever you see something for the UNCF or any individual school, we need you to contribute because they need our help, because they send more black professionals back to the community to help us and everybody else. Give it up for our HBCUs today. Did you go to Howard? That's all right, girl. It's all right, it's all love, it's all love. Even though Howard's gonna beat Hampton today. You know what, the, the whole point is for all of us to be down there together, that's all, really. It's just a lot of fun. And um, of course, a Hamptonite in hiding is the person who I'm about to bring forward, an AKA. But we love her because you know, she has, we've seen her journey and she has been, she's a remarkable woman. She came here as a teenager and just wanted to serve. And then she said, I want to be a lawyer. So she went and became a lawyer. And then she said, mm, I'm hearing the call from God. And so she went to seminary. And then she became an educator and she just continues to find ways and spaces and places to serve all of us. She could be someplace else making a whole lot of money, but she's obeying the call of God. In addition to being the director of the Rainbow Push Excel program, she is also a pastor, amen? We need more women pastors, do we not? Come on, so in addition to Rainbow Push, Fernwood United Methodist Church, the pastor, pastor, Reverend Attorney Jeanette Wilson. Our Father and our God, we pause to say thank you. Thank you for bringing us through the various storms in our lives. We thank you for this broadcast. We thank you for this founder and all of the founders who have laid the foundation upon which we stand. And so, God, now we ask that you would bless those who are here and those who are viewing and listening to us with hope and resilience in the midst of the storms that keep on raging. We ask these things in your precious son Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. amen. Uh, there are a number of things that we want to uh, celebrate. Uh, one of our young people, Rebecca Reed, is now a, a freshman at Yale University. She made the, the debate team. 
she participated in a mock trial as a freshman because she was in our oratorical contest. And so we salute Rebecca Reed at Yale, standing strong. We want to thank all of the sponsors of our back to school uh, uh, backpack, book bag, uh, rally that we held at Fellowship. Uh, yesterday, we thank Pastor Jenkins for hosting us. We thank Walgreens and CVS for providing supplies and Walgreens for providing the book bags and the uh, many, many, many volunteers whose names we cannot call, who packed, who purchased supplies and who brought them here that our children might be ready to start uh, school, the first week of school. We also thank uh, uh, Janice Mathis, one of our former staff members, who's hosting a uh, HBCU uh, college engagement uh, with, as a part of the National Council of Negro Women uh, uh, program. We have Kalana Kale uh, with them today. They're at uh, Florida A&M University making sure that our students are civically engaged, registering to vote and our census registrants for 2020. We want our students to vote on the campuses where they attend school. So we expect Cameron to register and vote in Ohio. We expect students to register and vote in the states where, and the cities where their campuses are located. And so Kalana will be giving us tweets and reports from Florida A&M. And finally, uh, Reverend Jimmy Daniels is here today. He's one of our thousand church connected uh, pastors, Shiloh uh, Church in Summit, Illinois. But he's a businessman. He's more like Paul. And so he has a job fair at PUSH this Tuesday night at 6 p.m. in Chicago. Anyone that's interested in uh, learning and working in uh, the cleaning business, you need to meet us here at PUSH at 6 p.m. They are going to hire people. They will train you to clean properly. And so we want you to join us here. Now there is, uh, I want to thank Reverend Jackson uh, for continually uh, fighting and being on the cutting edge of change. As you may or may not know, he is in Washington today uh, as a part of the Congressional Black Caucus. Jonathan Luther Jackson, who's supposed to be here, he's there. Uh, Reverend Dr. Todd Yeary is there. But Santita and I are here. <laughs> so, thanks be unto God. Everybody else is there. Um, the storms in life keep raging. And oftentimes uh, we focus on the, the physical storms. You know, global warming, as you know, has caused uh, atmospheric changes. Winter seems like summer in Chicago. Summer seems like winter. We, we can't tell what to wear because the ice caps are melting and the storms are increasing, the polar ice caps up on the top of the earth. And there are major shifts in the climate because the ozone layer, the, the layer that surrounds the earth has openings in it, mainly because of the planes emitting hydrocarbons into the atmosphere. It used to be because of the hairspray. It's also because of the automobiles. So many automobiles on expressways all over the country emitting these uh, toxic things into the atmosphere. It causes these storms. And so today when we opened the broadcast, we focused on Hurricane uh, Dorian and how it has devastated uh, a part of the Bahamas. And we can see the physical storms. We, we, we understand what happens when there's a snowstorm or a hurricane or a tornado and, and we rush immediately, we gather supplies, we, we say we got, to, we got to help the people and we do. And so that's why PUSH is going to be a relief center site. We're hosting things. Don't bring your, your winter clothes. It's not winter in the Bahamas. Don't bring things that people don't need. Don't bring used things because when you've lost everything, you don't need somebody else's extra. We need some things that people can use. They need sanitary items. They need new underwear. They have nothing but hope. Hope that somebody will see them. Hope that somebody will recognize the need and respond. So you can bring things right now as I'm talking. Pack up. Go to the, uh, the drugstore and purchase some sanitary uh, items. They need lotion. They need cleaning items. They do not need your used things. Now, 
we're, it's hard for us to imagine the Bahamas that we once went to for relaxation, for fun, now in such a, a devastating state. But as we respond to that, there are some other storms that uh, continue to rage in our lives. They are varied and they're very different. There are sometimes we don't think about these other storms and so we ignore the signs. We, we fail to respond with any kind of humanitarian response. There's no effort when we see, uh, I know you're saying, what are you talking about? What storms? Well, there's some political storms that are going on in this country even as we speak. The people from the Bahamas, they are trying to evacuate them from a toxic island to Florida. At least 100 initially were turned away from entry by our country. These are our people stopped at the border. So when you think about the border, it's not just El Paso. They stopped them from entering Florida, talking about uh, the words from the White House, these are uh, dangerous people. That's a storm. You've already had a physical storm. You're trying to get to safety, trying to go to a place of assistance. You're trying to get help, and somebody says you can't come here. There's some uh, other political storms. The uh, Republican Party is gerrymandering, redrawing lines across the South so that we will no longer be able to elect our people that look like us, that, that are black and brown and, and Asian to these legislative seats. They are redrawing lines in a crooked way so that we can't possibly elect anybody. Well, we're not going to let that happen. Those are storms. It's not uh, the other storms. Public schools are closing in inner city communities, New Jersey, Chicago, Philadelphia. They shut buildings down. And, and they change the complexion of a neighborhood. Where will your child go when the school is closed? Forcing people to move to other locations. You have parents rolling the dice to see what school their child can attend so that they can get a high quality public education. But we're not responding to those kind of storms. Well, we have urban cities where teachers are striking because they, they don't have the classroom size. They're not getting paid the, the wages that they should. How can you pay somebody that produces a lawyer, produces a doctor, produces an engineer less than the engineers make? Teachers should make more than anybody because they produce what we need. You see the a storm of extreme funding cuts. People don't have access to health care. Nurses can't provide the kind of support that we need. When you put somebody in the hospital, you are praying that the nurse will come and make sure that your loved one is taken care of. Well, how can they come when they're underpaid? How can they come when they're under-resourced and understaffed? And so when you look at the, that's another storm. Other storms, for example, these HBCUs that we celebrate that produce the most black professionals in any category, well, they're under attack. They are losing funding. Most of the children that go there need financial aid. Well, if I don't have the aid to give you and I need aid, how can I help you? That's a storm that we have to respond to. Well, a bigger storm. The violence that besets all of our communities. You see the, the children being shot when uh, we opened up this morning, a family met us here. One of our former staff members was impacted. Her family was impacted. A football player, a quarterback at Hyde Park High School is now in, Hyde, in uh, University of Chicago Hospital, struggling every hour for life. Shot multiple times, not because he's a gang member, not because he's done anything wrong. He's a quarterback at Hyde Park. He was on his way to school, wasn't hanging out, wasn't going to a party, wasn't kicking it, just trying to walk. And then somebody said, well, he didn't go in a safe zone. How is it you define where I can walk to go to school? So when these storms that are raging in our lives come, we have to respond. I, I'm, I'm reminded of Isaiah, the prophet who said in in uh, 41, he was trying to preach to a people that were devastated by several things. And he was wondering 
What should I tell the people? How do I give you hope when you see so many storms and the storms keep on coming? Well, you have to respond with a sense of urgency. When you feel the storm is coming, you you start to prepare so that you can survive the storm. We cannot allow children to wonder how they're going to eat. 16,000 homeless children in the city of Chicago that we know of, those who said I'm homeless, there are another several thousand who don't know they're homeless because they sleep somewhere different every night. That's a storm. We can't allow that to happen. We must respond with our voices. We must respond urgently. And Isaiah says, when you look at all of these storms in these turbulent times, oh, I know you you say, I, I just don't know what I should do. Well, I don't know all of the answers, but I know who holds the answers. I know that you need an anchor in the midst of a storm. You need something to hold you in place. You need a, a lighthouse to focus in the midst of the storm. Every time the, the disciples were out to sea, they could look and find the lighthouse because when the winds are blowing, when the waves are tossing, you can't get your orientation right. But I know if you get a shelter in the midst of the storm, when you know you have an anchor, you can focus. You'll say, I need to loosen some things. I got to change the way I... Our schools are defined. I have to change the way the funding is. I don't have to register and vote because I got to get people that are in the state and the county and the city and the federal government that move on my interest. I got to have a government that doesn't have to waste time talking about meaningless things. They are voting to make sure that I am protected, that funding goes to the HBCUs. Oh, I'm going to register because my anchor is holding me in place. I know my ship is tossing. The waves are moving. The, the sea is rolling, but I know that I have an anchor, and I'm anchored like Isaiah was. I'm holding on to the anchor. I know that there is a God. I know that God is with me in the midst the storm. I know that God is holding me in the midst of the storm, but I also know that God is in control of the storm. All the storms are raging to get my attention. The storms are raging so that I will be motivated and not sit by in the south. We can change the conditions. The storms will keep coming, but when your soul is anchored, and when your mind is focused, you won't sit by and let another election go by and you don't go out and vote. We don't need to look at just one office. We have to look at the United States Senate so we can make sure that we are in control of our destiny. We have to make sure that our children are protected. Parents, wherever you live, that community must be safe. It's not based on your poverty. It's based on your commitment. You may not have a job, but your job is to make sure that your child can go to and from school without fear of being gunned down by some erroneous person who can't shoot. It's not okay. Fathers, you may not live there, but you need to protect your child. You need to walk your child to school. That's why Reverend said, take your child to school. Meet your child's teacher. We must make sure that we are engaged in every aspect of the community that we live in. It's not enough to leave it to anybody else. When you're in a storm, everybody comes together across lines of race and gender, or across lines of class. It's not by how high you are. When the storm hits, the storm doesn't know your degree. The storm doesn't know your income level. What the storm knows is I'm going to take you out unless you all stand together. And so I'm asking you, as they sing, my soul is anchored. Even though the storms keep on raging in my life and in your life, you just got to know that, the, that, that your soul must be anchored. You can go through these moments of grief and loss when you have God and you know that God is with you. It won't change immediately, but it will let you know that you can make it when you're sick. 
because God is a healer that has never lost a patient. Oh, you can make it when you're struggling because God is a provider. He's all powerful and I know it. I just want you to know, make sure your soul is anchored in the Lord and God will provide. God will protect you. Yeah, though the storms of life keep raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Anybody can relate to this? Still that hope that lies within It's reassured As I keep my eyes upon that distant shore I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if that storm don't cease, and if the winds keep on and a curve. a storm in the light, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, my soul has been a gun. Yeah, yeah. After, after that mighty message, one thing for sure, I'm convinced if your soul have not been anchored after you leave here today, you will make sure that you get anchor in the Lord. And once you're anchored, you don't worry about Hurricane Dorian because you know that if you're anchor in the Lord, you're steadfast, you're unmovable. And as long as you are abiding in him, everything will be all right. I want to thank, once again, our founder and his absent, and Santita, and all of the rest of you that continue to work. Now, I once heard A.L. Patterson say, one thing we have to learn, you can't have 
a good gathering or a good worshiping without giving. How many of you believe that? We have to learn to pay and pave our own way. So at this time, we're asking those of you that's present, you talk about the crisis in the Bahamas and the other storms that Reverend Wilson have mentioned, but we need your support. And so at this time, we're asking everyone here, if you can not only just look deep, but go deep and support our causes here at Rainbow Push. And so those of you that can and those of you that will, we're going to ask if you would get up and march around like you at the Good Baptist Church <laughs> and place your offering in the usher's barrel. Amen. Those of you that can support this cause with at least $100, we're going to ask if you would get up and come right on down front. If you can support it with $50, don't stop moving. If you can support it with $10, we're going to ask if you would come down. But we are asking that you support, even if you only have 5 or $10. Would you stand up? Let's, let everybody stand for a second. Everybody stand. If you walked in here, would you stand up on the two legs you walked in? and be directed by the ushers from the rear. And if you would come round and support this cause, would you come right on down, give it to the ushers. I used to say, support push so that when you need them, they'll be there for you. The truth of the matter is we need them right now. And because we need them right now, you ought to support them right now. It may not be you now, but it'll be you after a while. And please, we ask, don't leave before the benediction. Let's give Reverend Wilson a hand for that powerful message. Come on, put your hand together. Let's give a hand. Give Reverend Joan in my hand for all of the wonderful music and the songs that they provided for us. And let us not forget Sister Santia Jackson. We want to thank Push's Choir for continuing to support the cause. And we ask those of you that it, you can continue to come and give your offering. If you have not given, if you have not given, would you stand and continue to give? In the meantime, Sister Jackson going to come and then we're going to come back and pray us out of here. If you have not given, we ask if you would please come. ask those of you that's going to remain for the volunteer meeting at 12 o'clock stay right in here the volunteer meeting will be at 12 o'clock you don't even have to leave the community center stay right here how many of you are going to be able to stay here for the volunteer meeting are you all going to come on and volunteer that's the only way we can stay open everybody it's a volunteer driven organization we want to thank you so much for your support 
Tomorrow morning, Reverend's nationally syndicated radio show, Keep Up Alive with Reverend Jesse Jackson. We will be reviewing the debate just for you. Go to keepupaliveradio.com or uh, get your iHeart app and get at Real Talk 910, at Real Talk 910, or at Patriot AM 1150. We're on from 7 to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time live. And we stream live on Reverend Jackson's nationally, well, on Facebook, on at, Rev J, at Reverend Jesse Jackson Sr. page. Everybody, shh. So we want everyone, who's gonna be here for the volunteer meeting? Who's staying in here? You're gonna stay in this room. We will be right here as soon as this meeting concludes. And you wanna keep the music playing very softly because you know I love music. I'm like Reverend, I like a soundtrack to my life. <laughs> and we are also gonna be meeting in this room on Monday evening. Doors open at six, 6.45 to come up on Facebook Live. How many of you are going to the HBCU Classic? I keep asking, I'm so excited. Finally gonna have Howard here, yes. Well, guess what? We're going to ask the question, and we want you to come here and invite all of your friends. We want to know if, what would HBCUs look like if all of this talent who are playing at Oklahoma and UCLA and UC USC and Amen. Michigan and Michigan State, what if they were at HBCUs? Do you know that would be a game changer for us? So you're going to come over here on Monday night so we can talk about that? And we're going to put that conversation out on Facebook Live, okay? On Let's Talk About It with Santita Jackson Friends. These are questions that we need to ask, because look, God has given us everything we need. We just need to know how to use what we've got. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 Have you had a good time today? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. God bless you, everybody. Please, a word from the Lord. I'm going to ask very briefly if you would do something that's so special reach out and touch the person next to you and repeat after me oh how good it is to dwell together in unity repeat after me we thank God for what he's done we thank God for what he's doing. And while we at it, we want to thank God for what he will do. Though the storms keep on raging in our lives, we come knowing that we have an anchor. Thank God. Thank God. And amen. God bless you.